welcome to Grey Matters webinar with Adobe. In today's session, we'll be taking a look at the Adobe and Microsoft partnership and how the integration can improve business and employee experiences. My name is Leanne Bevan, and I am the Vendor Marketing Manager here at Grey Matter, and I'm delighted to be joined by Jay Epton, Partner Strategies Lead at Adobe. In this session, I will provide a brief overview of Grey Matter, then I'll pass the button on to Jay, who will delve into the Adobe partnership with Microsoft, where he will then provide examples of how Adobe integrates with the Microsoft tools. He will also take a look at the other features that Adobe offers, including accessibility and security. And from there, explain more about how the Adobe solutions can provide digital transformation for your whole business across different departments. And finally, we will share some case studies. If you have any questions, please pop them in the question bar or use the contact details that we share at the end. And one of the Grey Matter team will be in touch. So let's talk about Grey Matter first then. So Grey Matter is a software reseller and cloud service provider that was launched back in 1983. And for many years, we have been supporting developers and technology led companies with a wide range of software. And in 2020, we were acquired by Climb Global Solutions and now hold offices not only in the UK, but also in Ireland, Canada and the US. And we have a catalogue of over 300 software vendors from leading companies like Adobe and Microsoft to niche developer tools and security solutions. We have a number of specialist teams covering ISV mapping and cybersecurity solutions, plus vendor focused teams for Microsoft and Embarcadero. These teams are regularly trained, accredited, and have a wealth of knowledge in their areas. In today's session, we will be focusing on Adobe and Microsoft and their partnership. So here at Crane Batter, we have proudly been a uh, Adobe Gold reseller for a number of years, helping customers with their licensing needs and questions. Plus, we also are a Microsoft solutions provider with a dedicated team who provide both direct and indirect cloud solution provider licensing. We also offer a number of Microsoft services and support, including migrations, health checks, design services and more. We use both solutions internally here at Grey Matter too. We know firsthand how great the tools are from our designer using the Creative Cloud tools to design assets for our marketing and sales teams to many of our team using Acrobat Sign for contract signing. And we use many of the Microsoft tools like Teams uh, for the day-to-day -day tasks and communications. I will now pass you on to Jay, who will delve into the partnership between Adobe and Microsoft. Over to you, Jay. Thanks very much, Leanne. Yeah, so good morning, good afternoon uh, to everybody that's joined us today. Many thanks for joining the call. It's my pleasure to present to you. My name is Jay Upton. I lead the uh, partner strategy for Adobe in the enterprise segment in the UK and the Middle Eastern region. I've been at Adobe for around two years, basically focused on the Microsoft partnership with Adobe, more from an internal perspective, and then in the last 12 months have been more focused on the ecosystems, and that's one of the reasons it's a pleasure for me to join Leanne and Grey Matter to discuss more about this opportunity and for you today. Uh, prior to Adobe, I was at Microsoft for six years, so hopefully not only will you get some sound bites from me from an Adobe perspective, but also you'll get a real good understanding of what it really means to uh, Microsoft as well. So let's jump straight into the content and talk a little bit more. Now, one of the things that I would say is a lot of organizations are thinking about ways that they can improve processes, reduce cost, improve the way that they interact and engage with their customers, with their suppliers, and with their employees. And I think it's fair to say that most organizations have, um, you know, use of PDF documents. And I think somebody from Microsoft mentioned in a recent webinar that Microsoft are very good at creating um, and, and being productive uh, within an organization, but usually any kind of document that leaves an organization, so thinking about sales quotes, thinking about statement of works, thinking about contracts, legals, um, even invoices, most of them tend to be in a, in a PDF um, form. Um, but also that we tend to find now that signatures are something that we still do physically on a day-to-day -day basis. 
but obviously it's very costly when you think about paper processes and also the cost of postage so uh, and even petrol so from that perspective it's a like how can you take the investments that you have in adobe and think about how you can make that more um productive and more valuable um to your organization and i think what it's fair to say that as we go through the slides today you'll get a sense of not only we will help you think about your pdf requirements and maybe your digital signature needs but we'll talk more around productivity as a whole and how that as a proposition can help drive your organization i do feel that the integration between adobe and microsoft which i'm about to talk a little bit more around is something that is not only a competitive differentiator for microsoft and adobe but also can help you and your organization be more streamlined more capable and also i suppose in terms of help you drive this you know um, I, i don't like to use the words too much but digital transformation you know how can we bring the digital reality to the manual and paper based processes that may exist within your business also i want you to think about what is your strategy around security around accessibility even sustainability and also how that applies to microsoft in in my interactions since i've joined adobe i would say like 99.8% of the organizations i deal with do use microsoft for their productivity so whether it's office 365 whether it's microsoft teams then um in essence we have the integration for you to be able to take advantage of of some of those areas but also think more around your strategy security accessibility and sustainability also and then it's almost like how can we help you on your digital transformation journey it's not a destination it's something that is continually evolving we're even starting to see um uh, announcements from Microsoft around copilot so the use of ai um uh, artificial intelligence in the day to day working of a frontline worker or or somebody that um you know certainly um interaction with customers employees and also um with with clients so that's something to 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 bear in mind and then i think also thinking about how can we help you repurpose some of the resources so how can we take what you might be utilizing people for today to do mundane or repetitive tasks and how can we help you um make those people be more productive more valuable to your organization and repurpose their responsibilities to be something a bit more sort of human led or or human um um interaction if you will so so let's just talk a bit about the microsoft and the adobe partnership now what is fair to say is that this partnership is not like any other partnership when i think about my time at microsoft Microsoft has a lot of technology partnerships with a lot of organizations. So if you think about um Adobe, Citrix, Rubrik, Veeam, Commvault, Veritas, Symantec, Fortinet, uh, Dynatrace, the list goes on. There is a number of technology vendors out there that of course support and provide technology that works on or with the Microsoft environment. But this partnership is something a little bit more um uh, different in the way that actually both organizations are invested in helping customers get the very best from their investments in the Microsoft and the Adobe technologies. So why do Microsoft or why are Microsoft interested in this is that basically Microsoft do not provide um ultimately do not provide a secure PDF document capability. So even though you can create PDF documents within Word and within PowerPoint they're not actually a uh, tree pdf in their form and they're not as secure so microsoft will always recommend adobe acrobat as their preferred pdf solution also from a digital signature perspective we also find that microsoft don't really have anything in that space either and in fact microsoft internally use adobe acrobat sign for their digital signature uses whether that be with their customers with their suppliers obviously from their legal interactions as well so from a microsoft point of view they're interested in making sure that you get the very best experience within Microsoft Teams and Office 365 and if they can find ways of helping you unlock the use of Adobe within those technologies so that we remove the need for minimizing and maximizing windows um the need for copy and pasting data and information and in other words relying on human input to make things happen if they can use digital solutions from Adobe and Microsoft to help streamline and automate some of this then obviously that's something that you should be interested in and I'll talk a little bit more and give you some examples of that in a second also from an adobe point of view i would say that there is a lot of organizations out there um smaller um competitors that will go out and create pdf solutions but actually they're relatively new to market and they certainly don't have the um experience and the longevity in the it industry that adobe has and therefore from that perspective 
our Microsoft partnership is another reason for us to be able to demonstrate and differentiate ourselves um, compared to that. But also from a digital signature perspective, we know that there are a number of suppliers out there. Um, certainly one big competitor of ours, DocuSign, that's been around for a very, very long time. And I think people use it more as a default because they're not aware of the opportunity to use Adobe. But also what's interesting is that DocuSign do not offer any kind of integration and automation to the lengths that Adobe does um, within the Microsoft environment. So for us, you know, we're really interested in really demonstrating that Microsoft value. And that's something that I'm going to share with you um, today. So, so this partnership, as I mentioned earlier, is very, very different to any other technology partnership that Microsoft may have with other vendors. And I think more so is demonstrated in the fact that there's a billion dollar investment. That's half a billion dollars invested by Microsoft and half a billion dollars invested um, by um, Adobe. And what it means is that our product management and our product development teams meet on a regular basis and it allows us to create applications to really bring this um, to life. And so an example of that, and I'm going to use this as an example, but it's not exclusive to. So I'm going to talk about Microsoft Teams and I'm going to talk about Adobe Acrobat Sign. But the reality is this could be Office 365, this could be PowerPoint, this could be um, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, and um, this could be Adobe Acrobat, this could be Adobe Acrobat Sign or both um, within the environment. But the point is, is that if you own something from Microsoft, Office 365, Microsoft Teams, um, or Dynamics, and you own something from Adobe like Adobe Acrobat and or Adobe Acrobat Sign, then you can switch these integrations on straight away. There is no additional cost. There is no hidden charges for you to be able to initiate this. And so just by going into um, a certain part of your application, you can switch these on instantaneously. And what it means is that you never need to leave that Microsoft application to use Adobe Acrobat and or Adobe Sign. We also have integration with Microsoft Teams approvals, and I'm going to show you that in a little while in the next slide. But more importantly, we have a new release around what we call Live Sign. And this basically means that if you're using Microsoft Teams, for example, with a customer, rather than agreeing and having a conversation with a customer over Teams and then sending a document after the call has been completed, we actually now offer the ability for you to drop a contract into the chat within the Teams discussion and it allows the customer to be able to review, edit, and sign that document whilst you're sat there as the employee of your organization. So in essence, you can guide the customer through the signatory process, but also more importantly, you can act as a visual witness as well as the electronic audit trail that we have in play as well. We also have pre-integration with Power Automate. And for those of you that may or may not be familiar, Power Automate is a very high level um, business automation tool and that means that you could use power automate to um, create a document from say microsoft word um, we could use some of the apis within adobe acrobat and or adobe sign to take data from third-party applications like oracle salesforce um, or, or, or a crm tool of your choosing and it allows you to if you if you will um, digitally create a document and merge information from different applications then uh, insert a signature as an example for Adobe Sign, and then automatically send that to a customer for them to then sign. The nice thing is, is that this could all be digitized and automated, and you, using Power Automate, it means that you can save lots of hours and time of people and manual-based processes to, to achieve the same thing. I think the other key thing to remember, of course, is by using some of the Power Automate um, uh, technologies, that you know, Power Automate doesn't need coffee breaks, it doesn't need holidays. It doesn't need to go home by 5.30, spend time with the family. And so it means as an organization, you can think of ways that you can drive processes and meet the needs of your customers, even outside of the classic business hours. I think the other significant integration is not just at a user level, which is what that middle column is all about, but it's also around the fact from an IT perspective, you can actually set up and deliver Adobe Acrobat and Adobe Acrobat Sign using the Microsoft 365 admin console. So that means there is no additional costs in terms of training, in terms of enablement for your IT team, but also more importantly is that we automatically integrate with Azure Active Directory, single sign-on and multi-factor authentication. So again, from a user um, you know, uh, operation point of view, it, it, as far as the user is concerned, this is their normal Microsoft Teams or Office 365 environment. 
and therefore there is no additional logins or windows um, for them to click through to actually get access to the applications, which I think you'd agree obviously will save a lot of time and effort um, for, the, for the employees. Um, um, Adobe Acrobat Sign, for example, is a software as a service. It's an application that Adobe serves from Microsoft Azure. So the nice thing is, is that if you were creating, for example, your own Power application, Power App, um, then you could actually create that application and still embed Adobe Sign as a signatory process um, within that application at any stage. And the nice thing is because the Power App and also the Adobe Acrobat Sign is running on Microsoft Azure, it means that there is no or little latency when it comes to driving um, this forwards. The other key thing for me as well is that when I was at Adobe, when I was at Microsoft, sorry, um, I remember Microsoft Teams being released, and I, I remember Microsoft talking about digital transformation. And I think that when the pandemic came along, we did see the uptick and use of video and chat and file share. And I think that's something that's continued since the pandemic and certainly something that we see prevalent within organizations today looking at, if you like, hybrid office work or hybrid working environments. What is intriguing though is that a lot of customers are saying, well, this is great, we've, we've digitized to an extent, but we still have manual and paper-based processes. You know, we're still using postage and petrol and print. You know, what can we do to try and accelerate that next phase of digital transformation. And I think the great thing about this partnership and the integration that we offer is that we can enhance the worker knowledge and accuracy using some of the automation within Power Automate. We can obviously ease the deployment and integration of these applications from an IT perspective, which is what something I've just covered. But also more importantly is that we can meet the needs and the capacity, increase the productivity and capacity in the workforce whilst also meeting the needs from a sustainability and accessibility perspective as well. So as we go through some of these slides, you'll get a chance to see some of that. So I mentioned earlier the fact that, um, you know, uh, you could automatically generate a document and then take information from a third party application and then send that document to a customer or an employee as an example. Now, this is something um, very quick that I just want to show you. But in essence, you might be, for example, thinking of changing the employment contracts for all of your employees to allow them to have a hybrid work environment. So in essence, you could create the body of the employment contract within Word. We could use one of the APIs within the Adobe products to connect to Workday, take the employee name, address, their employee ID, maybe the start date of working at the organization. And then what we were able to do is insert the Adobe sign um, signature box which means that you can automatically then send all of these employment contracts to all 10,000 customers. Now, the great news is, is that when these all 10,000 employees and when these employees actually sign their contract, when that contract comes back in, we can then get Adobe Sign to check that all the fields are completed correctly. We can have the file renamed and saved into a location of your preference. And that might be back into Workday or that might be in a SharePoint location that's easier for people to search on and access. So the point is, is that Adobe not only help you in generating the contract and getting the contract signed, but also it can help in terms of obviously saving and allocating that information wherever it needs to be in the organization. Also, let's not forget there will be people that are either intending to sign but don't quite get around to it, or indeed haven't signed for whatever reason. And Adobe Sign gives the ability for the person that created the documents to be able to identify the people that haven't, most importantly. And secondly, is that we can set reminders. And the reminders can be set to say, look, we remind people on a weekly basis until it's signed. And then as we get towards the deadline, it might be on a daily basis. And maybe on the final day of the deadline or 48 hours before the deadline, we could remind them on an hourly basis. So the idea being is that not only does Adobe Sign allow you to create digital contracts with digital signatures, but it can also take a lot of the pain and burden in terms of managing some of those situations. So as I say, that's one example. There are many more that you can go through, and I would recommend that you speak with Grey Matter uh, to talk about that in a little bit more detail. Um, even if you just look at the very basic integration, and what I want you to look on here is this is my own Microsoft Word environment, and what you can see along the top is the typical sort of page and ribbon along the top. So on the left-hand side, we can see I'm looking to insert um, maybe a, a page break or um, maybe insert a picture or some shapes. And then to the right-hand side, you can see we've got um, 
you know, uh, word art, we've got equations, and we've got advanced symbols. In other words, this is the standard ribbon within um, the Microsoft Word environment. And what I'm going to do is, uh, and you can try this yourselves, is if you click on Insert, Office Add-ins, type in Adobe, then you can see that there is a number of solutions there, Adobe Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat Sign, even Creative Cloud. And the nice thing is that you can add Adobe Acrobat Sign and or Adobe Acrobat into your Word environment. And as I click through the slides, you can see that you get a security warning saying, you sure you want to do this? You can accept the terms and conditions. But more importantly is that you can see the ribbon has changed. The ribbon along the top now shows Adobe um, uh, Adobe PDF creation on the right-hand side of the ribbon, as well as request signature, fill and sign, send for signature, and agreement status. So in other words, um, myself as an employee, if I'm creating documents on a daily basis within Word, rather than saving that document and then opening Outlook, creating an email and sending it, I can now send this document straight from the point of creation. So I can literally take a, a Word document, insert a digital signature, I could then type the email address of the recipients, put in a little message underneath and click on continue and send that straight from Microsoft Word. And the document would then, or the email and document would then appear within your Outlook sent items. But the good news is we've saved somebody probably in the region of five to 10 minutes in terms of saving documents, creating emails and sending them. And as I say, this is just a very quick um, example of the partnership and the way that the integration works straight away. So let's talk a little bit more about Microsoft Teams. Again, this is my Microsoft Teams environment. And what you can see um, on here is that I actually can go down to the App Store within Microsoft Teams. I can search for Adobe Acrobat Sign and Adobe Acrobat uh, within the Teams environment. They will insert the um, uh, icons on the navigation bar on the left-hand side, and these can be pinned. Um, and then also, I mentioned earlier about the fact that um, we integrate with Microsoft approvals. Now, the reason why this is significant is because when you're working with digital signatures, a lot of it is email based. So if you have a busy inbox or um, maybe you have a very aggressive junk folder, then the idea being is that even though there's a contract that's waiting for me to sign, the challenge, of course, is that if I'm not in my inbox or my junk folder is taking this email somewhere else within my inbox, I'm going to hold up that signature process. So the great news is, is that when you're using Adobe Acrobat Sign, for example, within Teams, is not only will you get the email in your inbox, but you will also get a notification within Teams. So for example, if I was to wake up in the morning, and I'm certainly one of these people that don't like to see the red dots on certain icons, I would have a red icon not only on my Teams icon on my phone, but when I logged into Teams, I would then see the red icon for activity. And the activity would say, there is a contract for you to sign. Would you like to review it now? And I would do that within the Teams environment. And so not only does it make me more aware, but obviously I'm more productive because I'm signing it and processing that as quickly as I've seen it. The other key thing around the activity button, by the way, within Teams, is that if I'm the person that's created a contract, I'm pretty sure that there are a number of people that will have had people chase them, right? You know, Jay, you, you sent this contract to 15 people, can you tell me how many have signed it? And of course, normally, if you're using paper-based or even possibly one of our competitors, then you would have to log in and review which ones have been signed and which ones haven't. The great news is using the activity button within Teams is that that actually tells me out of the 15 people which ones have signed and which ones are outstanding. So without having to chase anybody, without having to email or phone or WhatsApp anybody, I've got the ability to really understand the status um, in each of those contracts. So this is what Adobe Sign looks like within the Microsoft Teams environment. And what you can see here is we've got the ability to request signatures, manage the agreements, and even do a bulk send. So a bulk send is like I mentioned earlier, is where you could create one document template like an employment contract, and then you could specify that you wanted to send that to all employees. And that's something that can be done very easily even within the Microsoft Teams environment. And then what you can see is that we can see all the documents that we've sent, we can see what their real-time status is, and we can also see the reminders. So that, as I mentioned earlier, the reminders can be uh, monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, until signed. And so again, it just means that we can take a lot of the pain and challenge of managing that contractual process. The other key element as well is that even if you're using Teams on a mobile device, is the great news is that the Adobe Acrobat Sign and Adobe Acrobat integrate with Teams on the mobile device in the same way that it does on the desktop. 
And also, whatever you're doing on your mobile device is automatically reflected in your desktop environment as well. So from your perspective, um, you're always going to be productive, whether you're in the office, uh, hybrid working, or on the go. The other, the other thing is to remember that Adobe Acrobat is exactly the same. Now, not many people realize, but if you are viewing PDFs quite frequently within your Microsoft Teams environment, there is a free download for Adobe Acrobat for Microsoft Teams. So therefore, without any cost to you or your organization, you have the ability to download and use that free of charge within Microsoft Teams environment. The moment that you want to start using some of the features of creating documents, merging documents, compressing documents, et cetera, then that's something that would ask for a username and password. And again, if you've got the license entitlement to Acrobat, then that's something that you can obviously turn on very, very quickly. But I also want to talk a little bit more around the Microsoft Teams environment. Now, not many people realize, but Teams also has its own chatbot. And whilst that chatbot is there as a very basic functionality, it is something that can be um, programmed to be a bit more advanced. And so as an example, let's imagine that Leanne and I work in the same HR department. And uh, typically, Leanne is on holiday, right? She's, she's, she's on holiday. It's um, middle of August. And, and so you know, maybe you've come to me to say, look, Leanne's out of the office. Um, she was dealing with a contract be, uh, what, you know, before she left for vacation. Um, could you tell me where we are with it? And so using the bot, and again, assuming that Leanne and I have the same user rights within Azure Active Directory, I could say to the bot, show me documents for Leanne. And it would list all of the documents that Leanne was dealing with that are open. And then I've got the ability either to send a reminder to the next person in the signatory process, or as importantly, I can take over the whole process itself. So it means that I'm not needing to ring or contact or WhatsApp Leanne while she's on vacation, and it means that I can be productive. Now, it probably doesn't sound that impressive with two people, but if you're an organization that maybe has 30 or 40 people working within your legal team, it means that if you didn't want to allocate a per person, per case basis, it means that a whole team of people could have access to all of the documents and each person could play their part at any point in that signatory creation or closure or whatever it mean, need, needs to be. So imagine that bot helping to collaborate and drive collaboration between 30 or 40 people. So when we're talking about accessibility, this is something that for me is something that I've got a huge passion for. And, and I suppose really the way to think about accessibility is that whether you're an employee, whether you're a supplier, or indeed more importantly, if you're a customer, then you will always face accessibility needs. And now I know that, for example, in public sector and financial services, that accessibility is something that's going to be um, um, uh, under regulatory inspection at some stage with some financial penalties. But I think also remembering that every organization will have a requirement around accessibility. So myself, I'm a, a 50 year old man, nearly 50 years old. My, um, I've always been deaf in one ear, but always been pretty good at hearing out the one that does work. Um, I can lip read. Um, my eyesight has definitely deteriorated over the last, I would say four or five years. And so even from a normal sort of, um, where I wouldn't consider myself as somebody with a disability, I would say that I still have accessibility needs or requirements. And some of those are situational, and some of those are maybe something that are, are a component of growing older, for example. And especially as we see the workforce um, lasting longer and, and employees now being asked to work till 65 or, or longer, then, then actually the need to support accessibility is probably as prevalent as ever. But also not forgetting, of course, that customers have their own accessibility needs as well. And when we think about accessibility, it's about how can we make it easy for somebody with accessibility needs to use the technology that they have or using the technology within Microsoft and or Adobe to meet the needs. And this could be anything from color blindness to uh, dyslexia, um, or maybe even to a point that maybe somebody um, um, is blind and is using some kind of assistive technology. So we need to make sure that we're helping you, our customers, meet the needs of whatever your employee or supplier or customer is going to need. So you may or may not be aware, but within Microsoft Teams, there's a host of accessibility features. One of those is that you can right click on any message and you can click on immersive reader. And what you get with the immersive reader is it allows you to be able to display the message in whatever form you require. So in this situation, I've taken 
a purple background because of my color blindness. Um, I've also selected dyslexia view, which is the reason you can see dots in between certain words like October. And also even advanced to that, I could even use what's called the ruler view. And my older brother is dyslexic. He talks around how words float around the page when he's reading. And the thing is, from my perspective, is if you use the rule of view, it, it gives you that same experience. It, it, you know, my brother uses a paper, a piece of paper above and below the line in question, and that allows him to focus and read that line and then move down accordingly. And you can do exactly the same within the Microsoft Teams um, session as well. When you think about accessibility, don't just think disability. Also, think about linguistics and language. So. Um, I know that some of the, the largest high street banks in the UK, for example, they assume that most customers have the reading age of a seven-year-old. And that's the reason why sometimes their language, their text, the way that they display information, um, the reason they do this is because if they assume that it's of a seven-year-old, then it means anybody above seven years old can read it. Okay, So in the same vein, we've got the same thing here in that we want to be able to offer every user of Microsoft Teams and Adobe Acrobat and Adobe Sign to be able to be prescriptive on what they need and what they want. The other great example is, even on this scenario, it might be that English is not my first language. And therefore, by clicking on a word, not only does it give me a read out loud version of that word, so it would actually read out the word October, it also displays the Italian version of that same word, but also a read out Italian version for somebody to listen to as well. So it really shows you the power that accessibility is around linguistics and language um, and not just around, obviously, um, um, reading, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so the same comes to Adobe and Adobe Acrobat. So in this situation, I've chosen a very bland black background with a yellow font. But in essence, you can choose whatever background color you want, whatever font color size, um, 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 font type, but also we have something called liquid mode, which allows you to zoom in with a touch screen. And it doesn't matter whether it's a mobile device, a tablet, or even a, a laptop. But as you zoom in, what Adobe Acrobat does is it rebuilds the page to maximize the screen size and keep all of the words crisp as you can as you can make it, so that anybody that is slightly hard of vision doesn't lose that quality. Um, of the um, display of what's being showed in front of them. Even within Adobe Acrobat, without a screen reader, we have what's called Read Out Loud. And Read Out Loud basically allows the user of Adobe Acrobat to be able to click on Read Out Loud, and a voice from the computer or the device will read out the document as though they're sat with you. And what's intriguing is that it respects the commas and the full stops and the new paragraphs. So you get all of the pausing, uh, as though a human was actually sat there reading that to you as well. And I think the other key thing is, is that um, the problem with uh, documents that have been created by a lot of organizations is that just like you could have somebody that might spell words wrong, and then you can use spell check or have the, um, the if you like, the live spell spelling assistant, you know, the one that gives you the red um, uh, um, ripples underneath any word that's uh, spelled incorrectly, um, Microsoft offers the similar functionality with accessibility. So if you were to write a paragraph that Microsoft sort of deems that maybe it's not as clear as it should be from an accessibility perspective, it will give you a green wiggle line. And the idea being is then it might recommend a, a way to reconstruct that sentence or that paragraph so that any kind of screen reader or assistive technology can adapt. But the problem is, of course, is that it's user centric. So if that user doesn't have an understanding and appreciation for accessibility, then they could ignore that warning and therefore a document could be used or leave that organization and create a poor experience for an employee, a client or, in, or indeed a supplier. But what's interesting is that the reason another reason why Microsoft loves Adobe is that we have the ability that any document that is in PDF form we can automatically tag and build that document to make sure that it's compliant with any assistive technology that's in play. And that's something that is pretty significant because it doesn't rely on the user to do this. This is something that you can set as a standard. I'm not saying that you want to listen to this right now, but there is a link embedded within this presentation and obviously something that we'll share with you after the recording. I would recommend that you click 
um, on the on the webinar. It's a it's a fifteen to twenty minute discussion. It's not really a, a discussion on technology, you know, bytes and features. It's more around how technology can help accelerate accessibility within the workplace. And I think one of the key things that sits with me is is that actually as, uh, most organizations think of accessibility as physical accessibility. So it might be that it's around building a ramp to the entrance of a building or lowering the sinks and the dryer within the downstairs disabled toilet. The reality is, is that there are things that we would do physically in a work environment, but we don't necessarily reflect that in the digital environment. And using the features within Microsoft and Adobe, this is something that most organizations can switch on or make available to any of their employees. And it allows the user to decide whether they want to use colorblindness support or dyslexia reading tools or whatever it may be. And so for me, you know, I've had a lot of great feedback from customers that have either attended the session live, which is what we did around a year ago, but more importantly, um, even people that have listened to the recording since then, we've seen some great um, interactions with. I think the other key thing as well is that a lot of our customers have been producing PDF documents for um, well over 30 years. And of course, when these documents were created, they don't necessarily think about accessibility and security because obviously 30 years ago, I'm not sure it's something that was on the radar for a lot of organizations. And so we do have something called the PDF Health Check, which is a way for you to be able to use a tool provided from uh, Grey Matter, which allows you to audit your PDF estate, you know, the documents that you have either published or, or are sending to your customers or employees. And it allows you to understand the security and also whether those documents support access to accessibility assistive technology as well. So if you're interested in that, be sure to contact your Grey Matter account manager. And I suppose really, as we come to the end of this presentation, what I really want you to think about is, you know, if you're using Microsoft Teams and you have employees that are either remote or in a hybrid work environment, or maybe you have sustainability goals in terms of removing paper, print and postage and, and the use of petrol in terms of, you know, shipping information and documentation around, then what I would say is, is look at each of your departments. And what you can see here is I've highlighted HR, legal, procurement, marketing and sales and finance. But I've tried to highlight some of the documents that typically tend to be manual based processes. And I think the key thing is, is that it's not only around digitizing them or streamlining the processes, but also more importantly is how many times do we see it where, an org, uh, where a person leaves an organization and because their in inbox or their email inbox is removed or archived, it's then difficult to identify and find relevant information or documentation or contracts that may well have previously been agreed. The great news is by using the Adobe and the Microsoft technologies together is that everything can be stored from a Microsoft point of view that's not only more secure, more accessible, offers accessibility, supports sustainability, but it is also something that is can be searched and obviously identified and obtained by anybody in the organization subject to um, security rights. So my recommendation is, you know, think about what is your next step. If you're, if you're using Microsoft Teams today, when do your users stop using Teams and start using another application or start doing physically man, you know, physical or manual things within your office environment that you can help remove? And don't just take my word for it. We've got some great case studies. I've tried to highlight some typical large industries. We've got TSB, obviously, High Street Bank. We've got Lookers, which is um, a car retail organization in the UK. We've got Norfolk County Council. And just as an example of Norfolk, Norfolk, I know, um, had some special funding from the government for people with accessibility needs where they could apply for funding from Norfolk County Council to acquire special assistive technology and hardware um, for students to use technology to obviously still allow them to learn the curriculum from a school perspective without physically going into the school. The problem was is that to apply for that funding would take anything up to three months to obtain the funding. And of course, most students would have started the curriculum or the, the um, academic year. And therefore, something that Norfolk wanted to do was try and streamline and speed up the, pro the process for approval so that the hardware could be delivered in time for the start of the school year. I'm very happy to say that we worked with Microsoft on that and it allowed us to take something that was, as I mentioned, something up to two months, we can now do in less than two hours. And so it just means that all of the relevant schools and the students within those schools 
can apply for the funding. It can be approved and reviewed by Norfolk County Council. And then obviously the money can be released for the um, for the relevant hardware to be purchased and, and implemented. So it's a really not only just a, a great story around sustainability and and, and and digital automation, but also around the fact that actually it's improving people's lives as well. And then we've got Galliford Tri, which is obviously around construction. But as I say, these case studies aren't just Adobe case studies. These are case studies where customers have obviously benefited from the Microsoft and the Adobe um, partnership. And so with that, I'll, I'll close the session off. Obviously, feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A slot. And um, yeah, it's been my pleasure to present to you today. Thank you, Jay, for delivering a brilliant session there. I found it particularly great how seamless the integration is between the two tools and um, really fascinating there about the, all the different accessibility features. No doubt many people will find those beneficial. So that marks the end of the webinar. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you do have any questions, our contact details are on screen. Uh, just give us a message or give us a call and one of the Grey Matter team will be happy to help with any query that you have. Thank you.